When it comes to explaining what sound design is, I like to just do this. It's a lightsaber, right? That sound didn't exist until Ben Burt made that sound. And there's a bunch of different ways you can manipulate sounds that you've recorded to turn them into something else. That particular sound uh, I read was that he had a microphone on a cable and was in a projector room and was swinging it around as it was a lightsaber and you get this really great movement with it. I believe that that was also layered with the hum of a refrigerator, though don't necessarily quote me on that, I'd have to double check. But um, sound design is just like it sounds. It's designing this sound for something you see on screen. It could be something uh, that you want to incorporate in your music and turn it into something else. I recently watched an interview with Billie Eilish and they were talking about how they had used the sound of an Australian crosswalk beeping in Bad Guy. I believe it was leading right up into the bridge. They ended up pitch shifting it, doing some other reverb stuff to it, um, but it started out as this sound effect that you wouldn't think would make it into a you know, five-time Grammy award-winning song. It's kind of amazing. Um, my first thought about sound design is, is this going to help tell this story? Is it going to help the director get across what they want? Is it going to help the artists that you're working with in the musical sense? Is it going to help uh, move their project as along as well? I always start with my own sound effects library. So I have these sound effects that I have found that I use over and over. Uh, some ambient sounds, um, wind sounds that I like, uh, something that sounds more cold and more hot or more breezy. Um, I have a collection that I can search that's just ready to go on a dedicated hard drive for uh, my sound design projects and I'm always pulling from there. So that's usually my first step. What I love about sound design is really being able to immerse yourself in the story. So if you're, for example, creating a sound effect for a monster or a ghost, see what you can figure out about that character's backstory and how can you incorporate that into their sound. Uh, a horror movie I worked on, the character was this uh, very creepy, I mean of course it's a horror movie, but this creepy old woman who was formerly a babysitter who unfortunately met her end by hanging. So when it came time to do her vocalizations, I wanted her throat to sound messed up. So we did growling. Um, she was also a very kind of visceral character. So we used uh, a lot of wolf sounds, animal sounds. You can always start with, with something like that and uh, process it with reverbs, delays, uh, some kind of EQ to, to make it more uh, harsh or make it a little bit more muddy or make it sound closer or further away. Uh, there's just tons of stuff you can do, but I think starting with what the motivation is, what story you're trying to tell is the best place to start.